Hey guys, Keith here. Um, I want to do a quick video to um, talk about uh, backup um, and how backup works, how to configure it and how to recover from it. Um, so in this case, I'm in my main show folder and within that main show folder, if I go to it, documents, uh, my lights, home, you'll notice that there is a backup folder. Um, and this one's actually reasonably clean, but basically these, each one of these folders represents a backup. Uh, there's a timestamp here when the file was actually created. So 2018, April 17 at 8, 41 and 29 seconds um, in the evening. And on start tells you that this is a backup that was produced when XLight starts because you can optionally configure XLight so that every time you start XLight, it grabs a copy of um, a subset of your files and backs them up. And that way you can always go back to where you were at the beginning of your session reliably knowing that a full set of the most important files are backed up in there. Um, and each time they, each time you run XLights, it will go and create another one of these. Um, you can also manually trigger backups and we'll talk about that as well. Within a backup folder, it's worth understanding what actually does get backed up because it's not everything in your show folder. It's basically all of the files which either end in XML or X backup. Um, interestingly, that means that your schedule is not backed up and that's something that uh, I probably should go back and address, but right now it doesn't happen. Um, the XML files, uh, these ones here are all these XML files up here are all sequences. Um, and of course you have your networks file, which is like your setup tab and you have your uh, RGB effects file, which is like your layout tab. So both of those are, are obviously very key files. Sorry, the RGB effects file. Sorry, this damn zoom bars in the way. So there's your RGB effects XML file and there's your networks XML file. All the rest are sequences. The X backup files are the auto save files. So if you have auto save turned on, then every three minutes or maybe it's 10 minutes, X lights will look at the RGB effects file and if anything has changed, it will save it. Um, and if anything has changed in your currently open sequence, it will save it. These X backup files are exactly the same format as the XML files. And if you want to use them, it's really a case of coming into this file here and saying, um, I'm going to rename that file. Sorry. Uh, and you know, I'll just call it you know, .xxx. It doesn't really matter. And then I come up to this one and give it an XML name, and then I can actually load that file as if it was at the current file. Um, so, but I save the X backup files in here as well, because who knows, maybe you want the last auto save that occurred and you want to be able to go back and find that. All right, so that, that's what everything gets backed up to, but let's talk about the settings. And, and there's a whole stack of them in the settings menu that relate to backup, and it's worthwhile understanding what they are. So the first option up here is backup on save and by default, I turn that off. Uh, if you have backup on save uh, turned on, then every time you save your sequence, it will also create another folder in this backup folder with a copy of the sequence once it's saved. So if you, uh, you know, run XLight, you do a bit of sequencing, you save it, you do a bit of sequencing, you save it, you do a bit of sequencing and save it. And you want to be able to go back to one of those save points just in case you screwed something up or whatever then setting that setting to save on uh, backup on save will guarantee that you will always get a frozen in time copy of your sequence, of your layout, of your setup at the point in time that you did a save. And you can go back later in the day if necessary, the next day or whatever, and find it. Um, the backup on launch does exactly the same thing, except it backs up automatically every time you run XLight. So when I start XLights, the first thing it will do is back up all of my files and back up all of my autosave files. So that way I know that no matter what I do, I can't screw up anything. So if, if XLights crashes 
and I start X lights again, it will grab a copy of everything, set it aside in a frozen point in time so I can always go back to it. Even if I then go and do, you know, I, I try to use the auto save and I screw it all up, it doesn't really matter because I've still got that backup. It's always there. Um, the alt backup location allows you to sec set a secondary backup location. It doesn't change where backup on save and backup on launch goes. But if you go over to the file menu, there is this alternate backup, F11. And what this is really good for is if you set the alternate backup location to be, say, your Dropbox folder. Um, and this means when you press F11, it's going to take your backup and it's going to it's going to make that backup in your Dropbox folder, which you can then replicate up into the cloud. But the backup, if you press F10 or if you back up on save or you back up on launch, that is always going to go into the backup folder inside your show folder and you cannot redirect that. Now, the other thing about these backups is they grow uncontrollably. If you're a frequent user of X Lights, you can end up with hundreds and hundreds of these. And depending on the nature of your show folder, you can end up with gigabytes of backups. Um, we never clean them up. And there's a reason why we don't clean them up. And that's because I have no idea what's important to you. I mean, I could create a rule that says, look, delete every backup that's older than 10 days old or five days old or a year old or whatever. But who knows? Maybe you're really keen that you're able to go back to a backup folder that you chose to keep from last Christmas or something else. So rather than us making a decision for you and getting it wrong, we just let this thing grow uncontrolled. But one of the things that you can always do is you can come on and say, well, you know what, I actually don't care about anything prior to the 16th of April, so I'm just going to delete those and erase them and they're gone and it'll reclaim a whole bunch of space. But this really does get big. Seriously, it's very easy for this to turn into tens of gigabytes of backups. So worthwhile paying attention to that. Um, what else have we got? Backup subfolders. Now, I happen to um, keep all my sequences inside my home folder. So they're all in here, um, which is all well and good. But some people like to put their sequences into subfolders and the like. And if you're one of those people, then you're really going to want to turn on backup uh, subfolders. Otherwise, it's only going to back up the XML files and the X backup files that it finds in your show folder itself. In your sequences folder or your XYZ sequence folder where you happen to be saving your sequence, it will not back that up. And so if something goes wrong with that sequence, there'll be nothing for you to recover. So most people would probably want to turn that on. Um, the reason it's optional is because there are some people that keep an enormous amount of stuff inside their show folders and this cause an even greater inflation um, of their size of their backup and so they wanted the option to uh, turn it off. Um, so yeah, definitely worthwhile paying attention. In fact, what I suggest you do right now is go into one of your backup files and check that everything you expect to see is actually in here. Because the last time you want to be finding out that something wasn't backed up is when you're going in there and looking for a file thinking, oh my God, I desperately need that back. So that's how, that's how that works. Um, and that's it, that, that's, that's the backup options. Backup on save, backup on launch, choose an alternate backup location like a Dropbox and decide whether or not you want to include your subfolders in your backup or not. Um, the one thing that it won't do though is when it does a backup, it will deliberately skip the backup folder. So it won't back up the backup folder and that obviously ends up as a bit of a, um, a never ending series of backups. That doesn't happen. It ignores the backup folder. It only looks in all the others. Now, the thing that it's not backing up, it's not backing up any images. It's not backing up any presets that you might have saved. It's not backing up any of your FSCQs. If you've got all your audio files in here, it's not backing up your audio files. It's not backing up your video. It's not backing up your images. None of those things get back up, backed up. So it is only backing up the XML files, which is all where all the creative elements of your show exist. Um, so it doesn't, it, it's not an alternative to actually having the discipline to back up your stuff properly to another computer in another location, just in case the worst happens and you happen to lose your whole machine um, or something like that.
So then the question becomes, so, so how do I go about recovering one of these things? I've got all these backups here. How do I get them back? Well, the first thing you've got to worry about is which one do you want? Uh, which one's the right one? Now, you may know intrinsically, and the, by far the easiest way to check which one's okay is to click on the Change Show boulder, folder button, um, go into the backup folder. I happen to be in a slightly different location, so let's go into my actual show folder. Uh, home. Go into the backup folder. Choose the backup that you think you're interested in. I don't know, this one will do. And do a select folder. Now, it's going to give you a warning. It's saying, hey, you're opening a show folder inside your backup folder. It's okay. You're allowed to do it, but please make sure you change back to your proper show folder and don't make changes in this folder. And that's really important. We've seen people who at one point or time changed their show folder to be the backup folder, and then they went into there, and then they started to sequence in it and change things. And before you know it, their actual master show folder is some randomly named folder inside their show folder and mass confusion ensues. You definitely don't want to be there. So you click OK, because we've acknowledged that, that's all good. It's opened it up, it all looks OK. I can go and look at my layout and my layout all looks OK. And now I can go and open up one of my sequences in here and I can look at it and say, yeah, okay, that kind of looks okay. I'm happy with it. So at this point in time, you're happy with the show folder. It's all good. So what I suggest you do at that point is uh, go back to your setup, change back to your original show folder. You can do it quickly up here. Go back to your original show folder and then close X lights. And it's important you close X lights, particularly if you're looking to restore something like your RGB effects file or your network. Go to the folder that you happen to be exploring with. Now, I must admit, I wasn't actually paying attention, so I'm going to assume it was this one. And you go down and you grab that file that I was interested in, and you know, maybe it's your RGB effects file, or maybe it's one of your sequences, and you copy that file from this folder up into my original show folder and overwrite. Uh, the contents of, uh, of this thing here. Now, if you want to further back that file up or rename it before you override it, knock yourself out. That's all good. Uh, don't forget, though, that the last time you started x -Lights, it took a copy of it at any rate. So that's probably not necessary. And once you've copied that file across, you can now come back down and relaunch x -Lights, and it will open up that uh, restored um, layout, that restored network, or that restored sequence, um, and you can continue. But make sure you're back in your home folder. You don't want to be in that backup folder and starting to make change because that's when you start getting yourself into trouble. So hopefully that's a bit of clarity around how to set up your backup, how to look at what's being backed up and verify that what you think is being backed up is being backed up and then how to recover from one of those backups uh, should you need to and don't forget to periodically go back and and delete some of your older backups and restore some disk space to your system because it really does chew it up quite quickly so thanks guys